Good day my little robins, it's me Beth, another month has come and gone, which means this video is an October wrap up slash favourites video. Advanced warning, there is a lot of music content the month of October, which is ironic for like mainly like a music related channel. But yeah, there is a lot of music content that I have enjoyed the month of October, so heads up, that's going to be the biggest segment. Before we begin, if you'd like to support me and the channel in the future, you can by clicking like to show me some love. You can click subscribe and tap that bell to be notified of when I upload on this channel. Enough rambling, let's just dive straight into this October wrap up slash favourites. starting with a brand new music segment in this like favorites and oh my god this is a gig segment because live music is finally coming back and I got to see three live bands in the month of October oh my god I miss live music so much my last gig was the end of February 2020 and well my next gig after these three are January 2022 but I got to enjoy three gigs and I'm going to talk to you about them up first is Bridia. Now this is a Japanese band that I have slowly fallen in love with like over like the past year and a bit. Ever since I've slowly been reacting to their videos and oh my god these ladies live are amazing and it makes me want to see like more Japanese bands. I saw them in Manchester, it was like a small intimate venue. You know, I'm pretty sure they sold quite a few tickets because there were a lot of people there. It was like a great atmosphere and like a great warm up and like a great reintroduction to gigs because it wasn't like thousands of people. And yes, I've got to say, seeing the looks on some people's faces who, you know, had been dragged by people who didn't know anything about the band, when these ladies started like swapping up genres and like when that like you had like those growls and like the unclean moments, the look of surprises on people's faces were priceless. And like I've already said, I want to see more like Japanese bands live and fingers crossed they come up north more. Next up is Youngblood here in jolly old Liverpool. Now I managed to get myself, my housemate Becky and a couple of random people we met at the bar from the bar, so in like the middle of the venue, right the way to the barrier, about six songs in. Normally this is something I wouldn't do, but spoiler alert people, I was very drunk and they wanted to get to the barrier and I wanted them to have a good night. I woke up with a lot of like sore ribs, not so much the hangover, but like the bruised ribs, which is a feeling I both missed and didn't miss. Anyway, on to Youngblood. This was like a bigger venue than what I saw Bradier in. This was like just over a thousand and it was sold out. We were packed in like sardines. It was hot. It was swelly. There were drinks being thrown around. Youngblood knows how to put on a show and I really appreciate like the audience interaction and how much he connects with his fans. I'm going to hold my hands up and say that like I'm not really like a big Youngblood fan but my housemate Becky is and she wanted to go see him live and I was like well it might be the only gig I get to see this year so I went along and oh my god just singing along with everyone people knew all the lyrics it was such a nice night and well apart from the, br the bruises and like the slight hangover would I see Youngblood again probably not on my own but if Becky wanted to go I would go with her ending the month I finally got to tick Don Broco off my band bucket list. I went to Manchester Academy which is a lot bigger than like where I saw Youngblood at the Student Guild here in Liverpool and I went with my good friend Kate who was my previous housemate if you haven't already checked out like previous gig videos where I've talked about going to gigs with her and holy hell this was an amazing night. It was a great set list, a great atmosphere and it was just an all-around like good night like they put on such a good show that I would see these guys again in a heartbeat normally like Don Broco isn't like the normal like band you would associate with me but there are a lot of bands that I like that people wouldn't expect and Don Broco is definitely up there oh my god it was just nice also like going back to like the pub like in Manchester and being like oh my god we're surrounded by like-minded people this is amazing and ironically Manchester Academy is actually where I had my last gig in February 2020 when I saw Beartooth with the Amity Affliction opening for them with Kate so the irony wasn't lost on us when we were stood there except this time we were not sharing drinks. 
Now on to album releases. Three bands that I love released albums the month of October and heads up guys, spoiler alert, all three of these albums will make it onto my favourite albums of 2021 list. I'm not going to tell you where, you'll have to check out that video later on in December when I actually, you know, make that video and decide my final rank order. Aston Alexandria released the album See What's On The Inside and this is probably my favourite of like the three album releases. Oh my god, Danny's vocals like are amazing and the band have never sounded like better as like a unit. I'm so happy that Danny came back to this band and for me this album, yes I do miss like the OG like Ask an Alexandria sound but I can get behind like this more like arena rock like melodic like more more rocky than metal sound that this band is producing because this band has grown up they have matured and it's about time you know you know we kind of get behind these bands changing their sound yes i know i'm a hypocrite don't get me started but for me i can get behind aston alexandria changing my favorite song on the album is you've made it this far it's more of like a slow melodic anthem that has some like dark and like powerful like gut-wrenching lyrics that a lot of people can relate to but there are other songs on the album that i cannot wait to see performed live when i get to see them finally in 2022 i think it's a 2021 but i get to see them in 2022 fingers crossed it doesn't get cancelled Next up is Ice Nine Kills, who released The Silver Scream 2, Welcome to Horrorwood, which is a continuation of like The Silver Scream Part 1, even though the album wasn't called Part 1. This band took more horror films and well-made songs about them, and all I can say is it was good. It was a good album, you know, there were some strong songs that, you know, really stood out from like others, but I think I prefer Part 1 more more so because I kind of liked more of like the films that they were referencing but oh my god Ice Nine Kills their music videos that they have like released oh oh they take the film that they are referencing and they shove it down your throat and it's gory it's delightful like I said good but not great if I had to like say like one song on the album that I really liked it's gonna be hip to be scared Okay, mainly because I'm an American Psycho fan and it's going to sound weird because that song really jarred a lot of people how it changed towards the end and I was like, I'm all for that if you've seen American Psycho but yeah, Ice Nine Kills, you know, they do release good music and I cannot wait to see what the guys do next and wrapping up the month of October is Black Veil Brides with the album The Phantom Tomorrow. Now this album got pushed and I'm so happy that it finally came out because this is one of my highly anticipated albums of the year. You can just go and check out like my reactions to like the singles because I reacted to at least two of the singles here on the channel so you can go check them out at the end of this video. Black Veil Brides are storytellers. They know how to like weave a story and so like the songs all kind of like link together as do the videos but the songs could also use like stand alone without knowing the concept. Oh my god I'm obsessed with like graphic novels like vigilantes like superheroes like blood Go. Mm -mm -mm. not since like wretched and divine album have i been like more like highly anticipated for like a black veil brides release this is a band that i have listened to since my early high school days and well they remain on my bucket list of bands to see live fingers crossed we get a tour here in the uk and i can go see them live at some point because i definitely think some of these songs will translate better with a, like a live audience I actually have two favourite songs on this album, and it is Scarlet Cross and Torts. Yes. So Black Veil Brides wraps up the free album releases the month of October. Now onto the ooky spooky reactions here on the channel the month of October, all requested by you guys. Oh my god, guys, I could not tell you like how many dreams and nightmares I've had of like the phrase ooky spooky, and I'm so glad it's finally coming to an end. I don't know what made me start it. But I did, and I committed for a whole month. Now, onto the reactions. Up first, we revisited the band Dexcore and the live video for the song Naked. Now, this was like a lot more like melodic than like the first time I checked out Dexcore, and I am a sucker for like a vocalist who does like both like the cleans and the uncleans because, oh my god, 
And I'm also a sucker for like when like a metal band does more of a slow melodic song. They are guilty pleasures and well, Dexcore didn't disappoint. Necromidal gave us like the weird like cult-like video end of days and well it was very fitting for like the current times we are living in this band is wacky and kooky and like dark mysterious you never know what you're gonna get with them and with each release I find myself being even more like pleasantly surprised if you like weird then check out this band and check out this song or check out my, my reaction just to see some very interesting facial expressions Camajo, sorry if I butcher his name, who I know from the band Versailles, had a solo project which you guys kept pushing on me and the first video I reacted to was Behind the Mask and I, I'll hold my hands up and say that it gave me Phantom of the Opera and well vampire vibes. Oh my god, his voice, his vocals are like, oh my god, it's like smooth, it's like butter, oh. And also like the high quality of these music videos, I was like, holy hell. Like, these are some good music videos, which garnered a second reaction at the end of the month of October to the song Vampire Rockstar, which really, like, hammered home the vampire vibes, and, well, I came out of it believing he was, like, a vampire because he never ages. He's beautiful, gorgeous, oh my god, the showmanship. Like, this was, like, perfectly crafted, and, as I said before, high-quality, like, music videos, this song was in English, which I appreciated as, like, someone who, you know, is English. Oh, yes. I would definitely check out more of his solo, like, material, but I also cannot wait to see what Versailles do in the future. A brand new band, Exist Trace, with an older song, True, got a reaction here on the channel. Now, visual K bands, you know, don't surprise me anymore. You never know what you're going to get. But the majority of them have guys who look like girls. But Exist Trace was a female band where they kind of, the majority looked like guys with like the hair and like, like the outfits. Apart from the girl with the long hair, I was like, you're clearly a girl. It was good. It wasn't great. All I can say about this song is that because I reacted to like an older song, I feel like I cannot really like fully embrace this band until I check out something more recent. So hopefully in the future I will check out more Exist Trace if you guys want it. Lynch returned to the channel with the highly requested song Devil and all I will say about this music video is video wise it did not give away like a lot of theming it wasn't until I looked up the lyrics that I actually saw like the link to like the like devil title this band is constantly like requested here on the channel so be sure to see more Lynch in the future and in the comments tell me what videos you want to see from this band next Dazzling Bad came out of left field with the song Vertigo. Now this is what I expect and probably a lot of Westerners expect when it comes to like visual K bands. It was wacky, it was demented, there were moments where I was like what am I watching? This is a little bit intense. Like I'm going to tell you now about the visuals. There was like some licking and some biting of like dead bodies, kind of implying about having sex with dead bodies. Um, yeah, I was just like, what the hell am I watching? The shiny moment though of the video is the vocals. Oh my god, her vocals are amazing. So I would definitely check out this band again in the future. If you want a cliche like Visual K experience, then Dazzling Bad might be the band for you. The last ooky spooky request on the channel was Victim of Deception and the song Prostrate or Prostrate, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Now with like a lot of deathcore bands here in the West, you cannot understand what they're saying on the best of day, so I didn't even bother to check out the lyrics or trying to understand what was being sung about. I let like the zombie chase visuals, you know, guide the way and I wasn't disappointed. One thing Japan do very well, they do horror very well. I highly recommend you go check out some like Japanese like horror films. It will give you nightmares. And there were moments like in these like zombie visuals where I was expecting jump scares. And well it said at the end it was to be continued. So I will continue in the future with Victim of Deception. The only like non ooky spooky like Halloween request on the channel came in the form of Bandmade and the song Sense. Now this came out of left field entirely because I was not expecting a Bandmade song. 
but you know, I, I I jumped on a music video. I had been jamming out to like their whole their new album that came out earlier in the year, pretty much this whole year. And so when I saw like a new music video, I leapt at the chance to react to it. And oh my god, I am obsessed with Bandmade. I have gone down the Bandmade rabbit hole, and I, you know, I I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to the normal world. I want to live in the Bandmade world. And yes, yes, yes. Check out all these reactions on the channel once this video has finished. Over in TV World on Discovery Plus, they did a thing called Ghost Hober, where there was like a lot of spooky shows and films the month of October. And well, well spoiler alert, I watched a lot of spooky shows. It was in the name. I watched the Ghost Adventures Goldfield Hotel special, and this like show in general will always have like a soft spot like in my like heart and in my life because it's one of the only like paranormal shows that I have kept up with over the years. Was this my favourite special that Ghost Adventures has done? No, not by a long shot, but there were quite a few like edge of your seat moments and like evidence that cannot be discounted. If you like Ghost Adventures then you're gonna like this special, but with all the specials that they have put out so far over on Discovery Plus, there are some better ones I highly recommend you watch, but if you're a Ghost Adventures fan you're gonna eat this right up. Next up was The Haunted Museum by Eli Roth, who teamed up with, like, Zack's, like, Haunted Museum and, like, some of, like, the most notorious, like, haunted objects he has. Oh my god, I could not watch this, like, at night on my own because it scared me and so I had to watch this like during the safety of daylight hours because nothing can scare you when the lights are on, it's when the lights are off. That's when things get you like haunted objects and things being attached have always like intrigued me over the years especially I love to go like car booting and I like going to antique shops and when you see certain items that just give you like a weird vibe it always makes me question objects around me and well you've, you've got to watch it to believe but there were some moments where after watching it and then going and doing like other things it was kind of weird that not really full-on experiences, but it just felt, things felt off in my life after watching certain episodes, but very quickly went away. Check out The Haunted Museum. The final show of Ghost Hober, which really piqued my interest, was Jack and Kelly Osborne's Night of Terror aboard, like, the Queen Mary ship. Now, I've only got one problem with this. The Queen Mary ship has been investigated so many times over the years. I've watched so many paranormal shows where investigators have gone on the ship that really, in this, like, special, there was nothing really, like, new that was, like, touched upon. Yes, there were some moments that vaguely intrigued me, but I watched it from start to finish, but I probably wouldn't re-watch it. For me, I actually preferred Kelly over Jack, because for me, Kelly was, like, more, like, raw like humorous and you know kind of took everything with like a pinch of salt and came out of it believing more than she did before she came into it. Jack from what I've seen from like Portals of Hell he takes things a little bit too seriously for my liking and I just can't get behind him but Kelly I can get behind and I would happily watch a show about her and her dogs going to like haunted locations. Not so much like a TV special, but I finally sat down and watched Demon House. I have like listened to like Zach on like Ghost Adventures and like on his social media talk about this house and like this documentary for years. I have read rumours and I've checked out stories online, but actually sitting down and watching this like thing, I actually had to take a step back because there was a lot to digest and like a lot to take in. And I can really fully understand how this affected, like, Zack's life. And it kind of makes me really, like, wary, if I'm being completely honest, of joining the housing market. I am currently a renter, but I'll be very wary when I eventually, like, become, like, a homeowner. I will want to know all the gritty details of what house I'm buying. I want to know if someone died there. I want to know if it's haunted by spirits or demons, because I want a discount if I'm going to be scared. Over on Netflix, I've begun re-watching iZombie and I binged the first three seasons in, well, a week because I forgot how much I loved this show. Pretty much, if you guys haven't checked out iZombie, you have a zombie. She eats brains and then she helps the police solve crimes from having, like, visions from eating the brains of the dead people and, well, she's pretending to be a psychic while treating her 
true zombie identity hidden. If you like humour, you like drama, you like the paranormal supernatural world, then check out iZombie on Netflix. Now, I only watched one film the month of October, and that was Dune. No spoilers. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. All I'm going to say is it had a great cast. It had someone for, like, everyone. You could go in and be like, oh, I really like that actor. And that's what happened, like, with my family and my friends who went to see it. We all had our favourite, like, actors and actresses. And there were some pretty nice set pieces. But other than that, Dune kind of disappointed me. And maybe the future sequel, you know, will help me, you know, like this more. I really want to check out the original. And my dad keeps pushing the book on me, so I might have to check that out. There's not been many, like, big... Well, there has been in quite a few major films that have come out, like the year of 2021, but it takes something special to, like, hook me and keep me interested, and unfortunately, Dune lost me at so many points. Go see it, because it's good entertainment. Will it blow your mind? Maybe it didn't blow my mind. On to the final segment, which is video games. I don't play many video games, and, well, the one consistent game on the channel is Animal Crossing New Horizons, and, well, I took the leap and I restarted my whole island before the big November 5th update and paid DLC. What the hell have I done? I got rid of Liverpool, like, which I started back in March, like, um, 2020. And, well, now I'm building Solstice, and fingers crossed I can get everything, you know, built up and ready for, you know, the November 5th release. I'm cutting it really fine, and I'm trying so hard, like, not to time skip or, like, time jump. But I cannot wait for, like, the new Animal Crossing's, like, update and, like, paid DLC. So, you know, maybe I won't regret restarting my whole island. Fingers crossed I can get it done before November 5th. And, well, the second and last game that I have played this month is Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer on the 3GS in preparation for Happy Home Paradise, which is the paid DLC coming to Animal Crossing New Horizons on November 5th. Whew, that was a bit of a mouthful. You pretty much need to take beloved, like, Animal Crossing characters and you build rooms for them and they love you for it. If you like interior design, this game is for you. It can be a little frustrating at times and a little bit simple, so I'm only hoping that, you know, with, like, the updated DLC on Animal Crossing New Horizons, that, you know, Happy Home Paradise really raises the bar on Happy Home Designer. But that just wraps up my October wrap-up slash favourites video. I hope you guys learned something new, like, new about me and, like, my interest. In the comments below, I'd love to hear, you know, some of the things, like, you guys love the month of October. All the ooky spooky goodness that comes with the month. Because now October's come to an end. We can move on to Christmas. I love Halloween. I love Christmas. This is my favourite time of year, if I'm being completely honest. Except April, because that's my birthday. But... The fact that Halloween and Christmas are so close is perfection. Yes, let's just wrap up before I continue to ramble. If you'd like to support me and the channel in the future, you can by clicking like to show me some love. You can click subscribe and tap that bell to be notified of when I upload on this channel. At the end of this video, you can check out my last two videos or playlists, depending on what mood I'm in when I'm editing this. Until next time, I am Beth. You know, keep being you. Keep being amazing. Stay ooky spooky. Goodbye.